another primary factor that we typically think about that influences a patient's ability to develop caries, a huge factor is oral hygiene, right? I mean, that's really kind of like the go-to excuse for most of us when we, you know, patients says, why, why do I get a cavity? Well, you don't brush your teeth, right? That's the reason why you're getting a cavity. You don't brush your teeth. Well, that's just one of the reasons, right? We've talked about so many other things that can influence that process. And oral hygiene, yes, is very, very important. And, you know, when you talk to patients about how often they're brushing, how do they brush? What do they brush with? Are they flossing? You know, do they use toothpaste? Do they not use toothpaste? Do they use toothpaste containing fluoride? Do they use regular floss? Do they use floss picks? Do they use inner, you know, proximal brushes? There's a lot of things that patients can do to impact their oral hygiene. Now, I even had an instructor in dental school. I remember this very clearly. It was like day one of dental school. You know, that was like when I actually learned to brush my teeth, I think, was in dental school. That's kind of sad, but, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm from, you know, a very small town in Kentucky. A lot of my family lost a lot of their teeth to dental caries. And my mom's family actually lost a lot of teeth due to periodontal disease. So I'm very susceptible to those things. And, you know, growing up, I got cavities when I was a kid, right? I frequent the dentist office when I was growing up. And so, you know, brushing was a huge thing. And as a teenage boy, I was not always on top of my oral hygiene game. As looking back, I really should have been, right? But dental school, you know, they're talking about how you brush your teeth because you have to teach your patients how to brush your teeth. So that's one of those things where, you know, you do have to have those conversations with your patients. You have to understand what they're doing and how it may be influencing their ability to get caries. But I had an instructor in dental school that actually, you know, said, you don't need necessarily toothpaste, just getting in there and brushing with a toothbrush. You know, you're disrupting that plaque environment. You're disrupting that plaque biofilm. And that's so true, right? You're going in there, you're disrupting the biofilm, you're removing a lot of that bad bacteria from the tooth surface, and that in turn, you know, reduces the ability of acid to demineralize that tooth. So it's very critical that patients understand how to properly brush their teeth. And when they go in there and they disrupt that bacteria from the tooth surface, you know, that stuff, you don't kill it, but essentially you're dislodging it. And some of that gets kind of swallowed and it gets washed away and, you know, you help reduce that bacterial count. Now you're reducing the bacteria count, but that's only for a temporary time period, right? That bacteria is able to recolonize. It's able to reestablish itself. So that's why we talk to patients about frequency of toothbrushing, frequency of oral hygiene regimens. You know, at a minimum, patients should be brushing their teeth twice a day. The majority of us, if we're being honest, if you go in and you brush your teeth right now, you're probably going to miss some areas. You're going to brush some areas really well, and you're going to have some areas where you hardly touched it at all. And you're going to leave some plaque biofilm there. So later in the day, you go in and you brush a second time. Now, hopefully, during that second time, you're actually getting some of those areas you missed the first time, and you're creating another opportunity to you know, disrupt that biofilm and to reduce those bacterial counts until the next day when you do it all over again. Now, another discussion that comes up, and I'm just going to briefly touch on, is you know, manual toothbrush versus electric toothbrush. Now, I will say this. When patients ask me about this, or if I'm recommending to a patient that they purchase an electronic toothbrush, like a Sonicare toothbrush or an Oral-B spin brush, you know, there's usually a good reason why I'm doing that. Because if a patient can use a regular toothbrush, a regular manual toothbrush, they can brush with this twice a day and they do not get any cavities whatsoever, well then, I really don't think they're gonna benefit greatly from the electronic toothbrush, right? There's not gonna be a lot of value added there. Now, however, if the patient is moderate to high caries risk, they have a lot of caries in the mouth, they're at very high risk for developing future caries, and I think their hygiene is a little less than ideal, they can use some work, and even after I show them properly how to brush, 
if they're not doing a great job, I think in those patients and those specific populations of people, the electronic toothbrush does give a little bit more value and gives a little bit more opportunity for that patient to do a better job cleaning. You know, I'm not going to say a blanket statement that everybody should use electronic toothbrush because that's just not the case. You know, I think they're designed for certain people that need it. And I can tell you, I've been using electronic toothbrush since I was in dental school. And I can tell a huge difference in my ability to keep my teeth clean with that toothbrush. And if you're talking about, too, like certain populations of people, like geriatric populations, you know, patients who have special needs, they have a harder time brushing and they may not have the manual dexterity to brush well, that electronic toothbrush does give a little extra value to them or at least a better opportunity for them to clean. Another thing would be like patients that have recession or they have you know, malocclusion or areas that's hard to get to with the toothbrush. The electronic toothbrush does allow them to kind of get into certain areas a little bit better and then it also kind of creates a kind of a turbulence of saliva and toothpaste and fluoride and all these things kind of just flushing through those interproximal areas and allows you know that disruption of the plaque biofilm to occur a little bit more easily in those situations.